Hi everybody, it's username K and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you such an exciting vlog, or at least I think it is. Now we've all been waiting for the grand unveiling of BMW's R1300GS and it is finally here. So I've done my research, I've got my stats, I've got my figures, I've got all the new information, all the crazy tech, all the crazy accessories right here in this little notepad of mine. So if you want to hear more about this bike, see lots of pictures of it, understand the variants, the tech, the accessories, everything like that, then keep watching and I will play the intro for you. So guys and girls, to everybody that is new to my channel, my name is username Kate, or Kate for short, and I love GSs. It's absolutely no secret. My personal bike is an R1200 GS in triple black, and I have been a big fan of the GS ever since I started working at a BMW dealership selling them. GSs were my bread and butter for two years of a very busy work life with not much rest. So I love GSs, I understand them. I know the 1200s to 1250s inside out. So I'm super excited to share with you guys some of the new information that has come to light on the anticipated, highly anticipated R1300GS. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop jibber jabbering. We're gonna cut right to the chase and we're gonna discuss the bikes. So, to start with, BMW have brought out four variants of the R1300GS, which is quite normal in how they do things. It was the same with the 1250, and it's carried over to the 1300 as well. So, we're going to take a look at the base model. I'm going to hopefully flash a picture up on screen of it whilst I talk. If we look at it on the screen now, it's available in one colour option and one colour option only. That is Light White Uni. Now, as you can see, the 1300GS is very visually different from the 1200 and the 1250. BMW actually called their R1300GS almost dainty by comparison, which I think is quite funny because the lines on the new R1300GS are very, very sleek. We've seen a lot of people saying, oh, it looks similar to a V-Strom, oh, it looks like a CB500X. But obviously BMW have put their own flair to this bike. So we've got very, very sleek lines, as you can see. All the wires and internals are behind closed panels, which BMW say um, hopefully should allow for smooth airflow, smooth and uninterrupted, which should make for a more pleasant ride. If we look at the base model, we have cast alloy wheels, and they do claim that these wheels are 1.8 kilograms are 3.96 pounds lighter than the wheels on the 1250. As you can see with the base model, they've chosen to put a really small screen on there. And the bike has a seat height of 850. On the GS1200 and the GS1250, we had two options with seat height. We could have it in a low setting, which was 850 mil, or if we were a little bit taller, we could have it set at 870 mil. That is not the case with this one. We have 850 mil. Obviously there are low seats available. In fact, we've got four different variants of seats available, which I'll delve into later. But if you're a shorty like me, don't fear because I've got some good news coming up about some new technology that this bike has, which is going to make our lives easier. So keep watching if you're interested in that. So moving on from the base model, we have the GS Trophy. Now in the past with the 1250, it was called a Rally, a GS Rally, that was that variant. This is, you know, kind of along the same vein, but instead they've called it the GS Trophy, which I completely understand. So with the GS Trophy, let's start with the color option. It's available in racing blue metallic with red and white lettering. It also has a very, very Gucci, white subframe, which just pops. I think it looks quite nice. So as you can see, the profile of this bike is quite different to the base model. The seat is quite a lot more chunky, and that's because it is a rally bench seat. 
Now the standard height on the GS Trophy is 870 mil, but fear not, you can swap that seat out for a standard seat which will make it 850 mil or you can pop a low seat on that which will take it to 830 mil. So thankfully these two other seats can be fitted independently of the pillion seats which is great news because it means you don't have to fork out for a seat and a pillion seat which would just be irritating. Those seat heights are of course based on the bike having a standard chassis. Now that's something I'm going to delve into in a minute. We've got options so keep watching. Since it's the GS Trophy, very much like the 1250 Rally, it does come with rad guards as standard. So as we can see by the picture, this bike comes with black crossbow wheels. You can pop gold ones on there if you wish, that is an option. Whether that's a chargeable option or not to swap the colour, I'm not quite sure. But I'm sure if you ask your local dealer, they will advise you. And the crossbow wheels are apparently 900 grams or two pounds lighter than the 1250 crossbow wheels. So there's some nice weight saving there. Now, I know some people will buy the GS Trophy just purely based on the aesthetics of the bike with the color scheme and how it looks. But BMW do suggest that if you wanna make it a proper capable off-road weapon, they do suggest some packages. So they suggest the Pro Enduro package, they suggest the dynamic package. They also suggest whacking some off-road tires on it and also opting for the sports suspension, which is gonna raise the vehicle height by a total of 20 mil. Okay, moving on to the triple black variant. Now I'm so excited about this. You guys know I absolutely love the triple black GS. I mean, I own one, my dad owns one. They're just, awesome they're stealthy they're badass and yeah this color option really really appeals to me so let's have a look at some of the things that this variant has as standard as you can see we've got a striking black scheme we've got five spoke wheels the triple black comes with a comfort seat as standard as well as comfort passenger pegs now, one of the things that you have a standard on the triple black variant that you don't get on the GS Trophy or the base model is, as standard, we have an electronically adjustable windscreen or windshield. Now, this is a first for the GSs. I mean, the RT has had the electronically adjustable windscreen, but the GS never has. So it's quite nice to see it on this model as standard. If you did want it on, you know, the GS Trophy or the base model, it is something that you can spec up uh, for an extra cost. Not only is it electronically adjustable, but on the triple black, it is actually a high windscreen. So if you look at the windscreen in comparison to the GS Trophy in the base model, it is a lot taller. When you get the electronically adjustable windscreen, you also get wind deflectors and lots of cladding around it just to neaten it up. Another thing that you get with the triple black variant as standard is a centre stand and a luggage rack as well. Okay, my pronunciation of this final variant, the name of it and its colour option might be a little bit funky, but bear with me, I'm trying my best as a Lancashire lass, okay? So the fourth option is option 719 Tramontana variant, the Tramontana, and it's available in Aurelius green. Now I think Aurelius means the golden one, which actually makes perfect sense because this bike has a lovely green color scheme, but it also comes with gold graphics with like a clear coat over it. It also comes with gold bars, which tie in really nicely to the gold cross spoke wheels that it comes with as well. We have an alley fuel tank that is painted green, of course, and we've got loads of little milled bits as well. This bike comes with comfort seats all round, comfort passenger pegs. It also comes with a centre stand and the electronically adjustable windscreen as well. It's standard, which is good. So with the GS, we have the R1300GS and the R1300GSTE. Again, very much like the 1250 arrangement. The TE is generally the spandangly version that has a few more packages as standard than the non-TE, but I'll get into that in a minute for you. Okay, we're going to talk about some of the packages now. So some of the packages that we have, Innovations Packet. 
Now, the Innovations Packet comes with Headlight Pro and Riding Assistant. When I first heard that, I was scratching my head as well. But if you keep listening, I'll break down Riding Assistant in a moment. And yeah, BMW have stepped their game up by adding Riding Assistant, let me tell you. But the Innovations Package is not available on the R1300 GS TE because the TE already comes with Headlight Pro. So if you have a TE that already has that, you can spec it with the Riding Assistant. But if you want that exact package, then it's only available on non-TEs. Moving on, Dynamic Package. Now with the Dynamic Package, you get DSA. Now that is not to be confused with DESA that was available on the 1250. And I'll go into that in a moment. So with the Dynamic Package, DSA, Shift Assist Pro, Quick Shifter and Auto Blipper, layman's terms, Pro Riding Modes, so that'll be like the Dynamic Pro Mode and Enduro Mode, and you get a Sport Brake as well, which is a slightly sexier caliper apparently with a bit more stopping power than a non-Sport Brake. Now that is all standard with the TE, so you don't have to ask for that package specifically if you do opt for a TE model, but you can get it on the base model as an accessory. Tour package. Okay, so with the tour package, we have central locking. Oh, I'll go into that in a minute. Preparation for navigation in the form of a cradle, I do believe. Chrome exhaust, luggage holder, left and right. So that is not luggage. You don't get full panniers with that. That is almost preparation for the luggage. You get hand protection extension. And again, that tour package is all standard with the TE. So if you have a TE, it's already on there. And then finally, we have the comfort package whereby you get the electronically adjustable windscreen. You get a center stand and you get a pillion package as well. So the comfort package is only an option for the base model and the GS Trophy as the Tramontana and the Triple Black already have that package as standard. Right, new accessories. I'm excited to share these. I was reading through these like, okay, BMW. So, firstly, we have forged enduro wheels. It's almost the next step up from cross-spoked wheels, which, you know, were what all the BMWs at the off-road training centre in Wales, they all had cross-spoke wheels. But we've stepped it up a notch. We've got forged ones this time. Now, they have a weight advantage over the cross-spoke wheels, again, of 1.8 kilograms, which is 3.96 pounds. So, we've got some weight saving going on there. Another accessory is the double silencer from Akrapovic, which has a sporty look and a robust sound. Now, in the literature I found, I couldn't see any performance gains. Maybe there will be, maybe there won't be, but it does just state that it looks sporty and it's going to sound a bit more meaty. Okay, now, I suppose this isn't um, perhaps classed as a new accessory, but it is a new feature and function, so I'm going to mention it. And that is the DSA. Now, as I mentioned, not to be confused with the dynamic electronic suspension adjustment, which was available on the previous GSs. With the DSA, it automatically adjusts the spring rate and damping to the driving situation. Damping characteristics depend on load, riding dynamics such as braking, acceleration and cornering, and selected riding mode. This type of suspension also automatically takes load status into account. Now, the difference between the dynamic electronic suspension adjustment that we saw on the past GSs was you have adjustment in the spring base, but with the DSA, you have adjustment in the spring rate. Okay, moving on to another feature, another function that has absolutely blown my mind and has removed the need for a specific dedicated seat height reduced GS. You can get this bike now with adaptive vehicle height control. So if you guys are familiar with the Harley Davidson Pan America, I know this bike has this technology, but we've now got it on the BMW and 
with BMW being a master of electronics and all that kind of wizardry, I just have faith that this is going to work really, really well. So when moving, the chassis rises to the basic seat height. So you're riding along, you've got the bike is basically 850 mil in seat height. When you come to a stop, when you're slowing down to a stop and you become stationary, the bike lowers itself to 820 mil. So if you're not quite satisfied with having it reduced that much when you stop, you could put a low seat on it, which means that when you come into a stop, and you actually stop, the seat height is sat at 800 mil, which is so ridiculously accessible. And I think that is a cracking new feature. Okay, so we're gonna talk about chassis variants and suspension variants in this section of the video. Now, obviously with all the new functions, uh, with the DSA and the lowering, of the bike, we have got improved suspension. It's still telelever, but this time we've got Evo telelever, and we do have a better performing shock as well. So the base model, the base chassis, the base suspension, you've got conventional struts, you've got manual adjustment of a spring base. So you can have it like that without any DSA, unless you get the TE then you don't have a choice because it comes with that dynamic package which gives you DSA. So with the DSA, say you go for a TE spec, you will get electronically operated spring elements, automatic adjustment of damping, spring rate and load compression. So if you want to just stop at DSA, you can. You can enjoy your electronic wizardry, but you can go a step further in two directions. You can spec the bike up with sport suspension, which basically makes the bike vehicle height 20 mil taller. So you've got better ground clearance, you've got more travel, you've got optimized ergonomics, as BMW say, with that suspension. Or you could take it in a route that I would go down, which is that adaptive vehicle height control route. So you've got options. You don't have to buy this GS with the sport suspension or with that active vehicle height control. You can just stop at DSA if you're a regular limb length human who can just manage any kind of bike because you're quite tall, then you might not necessarily need the, you know, the lowering of the bike uh, when you come to a stop. So you've got options, which is good. I like options. Right, another amazing feature on this bike Riding Assistant. So with Riding Assistant, you get the active cruise control, just like what is available on the RT. So what does this mean? Well, it's not just like normal cruise control where you set it and then you go at a certain pace and then when you catch up to a vehicle that's going slower, you have to knock it off by either knocking it off at the switch or braking clutch, whatever you need to do. This will basically, by radar technology, sense you coming up to a vehicle and keep you a set distance away from it. Now you have levels of customization that can set you closer or can set you further back depending on your comfort zone. So it has the ACC. Another thing it has is a front collision warning. So if you are getting quite close to a vehicle, it'll start you know, displaying warning lights. And then if it senses that you're getting pretty close to a vehicle and you're braking, but you've got a little bit more braking to be had that you're not doing you know, with your foot and your, your hands, it will do it for you, the bike will do it for you to basically give you optimum braking in that dangerous situation that you're finding yourself in because you're not being able to brake in time. Another thing we have oh, with the ACC, quick one to mention, is it speeds up with indication. Now, if you have ridden the KTM Super Adventure S, that has the same feature where you can be riding along, you know, you, you check your mirror, you check your blind spot, you go to indicate, and with the indication, the bike will gradually increase speed to allow you to overtake seamlessly and comfortably. Um, it's never any good when, you know, active cruise control, you, you just, you don't indicate and then you just pull out and then you gradually, you know, speed up to what you've set it at. 
but this accelerates for you as you indicate so you can just focus on pulling out and you know moving with the flow of traffic which is good so the bike also has blind spot warning technology you get a little triangle that appears on your mirror if it senses something's in your blind spot it will just illuminate if you start to complete your maneuver and there's something still in your blind spot and you're getting you know a bit close to it it'll start flashing to to warn you that you really should be taking evasive action else you're just gonna whew, plow into something that's in your blind spot which is never good so yeah riding assistant new piece of technology i'm really glad that they've put it on the r1300gs i was hoping they would because a lot of the competitors have it and you know just want to keep up to date with the competitors and I think they have, which is great. Okay, moving on to panniers. So we've got a different pannier setup. We've got different varios compared to the 1200s and 1250 GSs. Now I know there's a lot of 1250 owners that'll be whinging, saying, oh, I was gonna trade in, but I can't take the panniers with me. But fear not, because you can always sell them separately or you can include them in your part exchange and get a bit more for the bike, which is always good. But there's a reason these panniers are different. I mean, the whole back end is pretty much different. So where there's a different back end, there's gonna be different fittings, fixtures of the panniers. Now they didn't come to play with these panniers. They have made some pretty good advancements with them. So with the new top box and panniers, they are electrified. We have central locking. We've got central locking with them. Now we've seen that on the RT, but we've never seen it on a GS before. So it's a first there. With the top box, we have a USB. We have trunk lighting as well. So I'll say you're on your European trip and it's pitch black and you've just got to your hotel and you're just fumbling around for all your essentials. You'd have to fumble. The lights there. You can also get a backrest for the pillion which goes on the top box for their comfort and normally the top box on the old Varios there was like a handle that you would pull and it would make the top box taller to give you more volume. They have still got you know adjustable volume but it is with a hand wheel instead of a little bar thing that the other Varios had. So talking about the panniers in the top box, payload. Okay, so with both panniers, there's a payload of 10 kilograms or 22 pounds. That's for both of them. And then for the top box, the payload is six kilograms or 13.22 pounds. For the literage on the left case, it can accommodate uh, 25 to 32 litres. Right case, it can accommodate 24 to 30 litres and the top box, 28 to 36 litres. So pretty good, if you ask me. BMW have been really, really conscious about customising the ergonomics of the GS. So we've got a lot of customisation available. We have wide bars on the GSs, but if you're a smaller rider and you struggle with that, you can go for their comfort bar, which they do recommend for smaller riders if you're struggling with that bar. We've got four different seat options. They're all heatable. And we have the standard seat, the comfort seat, the comfort high and the comfort low. When it comes to passengers, we've got passenger comfort seat, which again can be heatable or not, depending on the pillion's preference or the person that's paying for the seat's preference. On the topic of ergonomics, you have three different rider pegs as well. So lots of customization to really fine tune it and get it exactly how you want. Okay, now we're on to the exciting stuff. We've gone through some accessories. We've gone through some uh, new electrics or electric features that the bike has. Now we're going to get down to, I think, the most crucial, the thing that everybody was wondering. How is a 1300 differing from performance to the 1250 in terms of the engine? Well, we've still got the Boxer engine, of course, iconic for the GS, but we have got some updated stats, which I'm gonna run through now for you. I have a little table here of the 1300, the 1250, and then the competitors. But just the crucial stats to begin with, I'm gonna compare them against the 1250 GS. So, horsepower. 
1250GS has 136 brake horsepower. If we look at the 1300GS, we have 145. So, massive step up in horsepower, in my opinion, for the GS but it still puts it at the bottom of the pile in terms of its competitors. So the next lowest we've got um, the Harley-Davidson Pan America and the Triumph Tiger 1200 GT. They have 150 brake horsepower. Then we've got the KTM Super Adventure at 160 and the Multistrada V4 at 170. So we've had improvements from the previous GS which is great but it's still at the bottom of the pack when it comes to power. However, I think the more important figure is below with the torque. Now this is where the GS excelled as a 1250 amongst its competition. So the GS 1250 had 143 newton meters of torque, which was pretty impressive considering the Triumph had 130, the Multistrada V4 125 newton meters, the Super Adventure was probably the closest with 138 newton meters of torque and then we have the Harley Davidson Pan America at 128. New torque figures for the 1300 GS 149 so from the 1250, we've gone from 143 to 149. It's blowing its competition out of the water in terms of torque. Now combined with the weight saving, so the weight saving from the 1250 GS and the 1300, I think we've shed about 12 kilograms. So you imagine we're 12 kilograms lighter, but we're also very much up on torque. I think it's gonna be a hoot. I think power to weight ratio, this is going to be a fun machine to ride. So that concludes my little spec check on BMW's R1300GS. Guys, what do you think about the bike? What do you think about it? I know when the pictures were leaked earlier on in the week, that's always disappointing to me that when that happens because I'm like a kid at Christmas. I've been waiting for this GS reveal for a long time. I wanted to see it live from the presentation from Germany, not some grainy pictures that some rogue bloody staff members sent around. So yeah, disappointing and annoying that someone did that. But now we've got these spandangly, high definition, high quality pictures where we can actually see the bike in detail. What do you make of it? I think it's one of those bikes. I mean, I've seen people's reactions to it in, you know, Facebook forums and stuff like that. And I think it's one of those bikes that will grow on people over time. You just got to get used to it. It's like the GS. When that came out, so many people were like, that's ugly. Those lights are vile. What's going on? Now, you kind of grow to like it, or at least I do. And, you know, probably couldn't see a GS looking any other way. I'm moving with the times, I'm embracing it. I think I like it more as I see it in the flesh and you know see more images of it and get used to it. But I personally would go for the triple black option and probably go for some black cross spoke wheels as well because I think that'd look pretty good. And I'd definitely get the adaptive vehicle height control because yeah, I think that would be very beneficial to me with my stumpy little legs. I definitely need to get on the phone to Halliwell Jones Motorrad in Chester and get myself a test ride arranged for as soon as it become available because I desperately want to ride this bike and give you guys a ride review. I'm literally itching to get on it. It's just one of those bikes I've been really, really excited for it to come out and you know, we're getting closer to being able to touch it in the showroom, sit on it, ride it. So yeah, mega excited. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this different setup for a vlog, this little information dump. If you have and you found it useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow and I'm forever grateful. And until the next time guys, take care, ride safe and look after each other. Bye. So if we take a deep dive in, what are my hands doing? Am I okay?
Am I all right? You can see that it has red and white letterings. Letterings, oh my God, come on Kate, wake up. Okay, it turns out I have a 30 minute limit on that camera and then it switches itself off. Wonderful, when you've just read everything.